practice. And so we're going to be in a new series today called Armor. And most of you grew up, if you grew up in church, you've, you've heard about the armor of God. We've, there have been little songs that have been sang about the armor of God. There have been different things that, you know, you've, either, you've probably heard a sermon on the armor of God. But, but what I know, what, I, what I'm finding out, especially as I get a little older, is that I'm finding out that as a believer, I have no option but to wear the armor of God. I, I can't make it without it. Uh, I, I don't survive today without the armor of God. Because I think what t- sometimes we get into, and I think what we're taught, I think maybe, maybe you've been in a church like this, but it, you know, if, if you'll accept Jesus, everything's good. And, and I, I want, I'm just, I'm not gonna lie to you. Everything is great when you meet Jesus and when you accept Jesus. But it is not easy. It's just, it's not easy. There are sacrifices that you make. There are things that the Spirit of God changes in your heart. Decisions that you might have made at one time because of God now in your life. You go, I don't think I can do that anymore. I don't need to do that anymore. And so as we get into this series, there's a lot of things that I want us to tackle. And and over the next several weeks, we will. Uh, But today, today I'm just going to tackle a couple verses in Ephesians chapter 6. If you have your Bible, you can go ahead and turn there, Ephesians chapter 6. The the whole series is going to take us through verses 10 through 20. But I'm going to only preach on 10 through 13 today. I'm just going to spend a couple minutes on four verses. And uh, I, I want us to kind of lean into this because, again, I think that the church... The modern church has been set up really well to worship. We love, we love the music part. We love Caleb. We love the message on Sirius XM radio. We love, we love the worship part of it. What I fear is that the modern church hasn't been set up really well to go to war. Spiritually. When things get hard. When things get tough. Because things are going to... How many of you know things get tough? You don't expect it. You don't see it coming. You, you don't, you don't, nobody plans on it. Nobody wakes up and goes, man, I hope I get punched in the mouth today by the devil. You don't, you don't do that. And if you do, you're weird. Okay? We, we don't, but also I don't know that we've really spent a lot of time preparing ourselves for battle. Getting into the word of God. Digging into who Christ is in our life and how we live more in him. And so this series, I hope, I know it's the beginning of the year and people go, well, I, want, I wanted you to ramp us up, Vince. I, want, I wanted to come and be like, woo, let's go. I hope that happens for you. And look, I'm salesman enough and I could bring the band back out and we could ramp up the room and I could lean out over here and by the end of it, we could all be cheering and, and screaming our faces off. But if nothing changes when you walk out the door, none of that matters. None of that matters. I want you to be able to take the armor of God, put it on, and fight the battles that are coming. Not that might come, that are coming. No matter where you are in your walk. Some of you here today, you've been Christians for a long time. You've been been Christians for a long time, and you've been in some battles, and there may be some scars. I'll ask this. How many of you, I ask this neat service, and it's been pretty telling. We live in a world where most people will use the word fight but very few people have ever been in one. Now, this is the down and dirty 1130. (laughs) So I have some expectations for y'all, all all right? How many of you have ever been in a, let me clarify before you raise your hand, a fight? And I mean, what I mean by fight is I mean blood on your hands, blood running out of your face, Knock down, drag out, fight. If you've been in one like that, hands up. How many of you have never been in anything like that? Hands up. Yeah. Most of the other services, I I would say a strong 90% of both the other services, never. Well, I pushed my little brother. That don't count. That don't count. I mean, I don't know your family. Maybe that counted. Because <laughs> I, I don't know where it ended up after that. I think I, I, think I, I have brothers, and I, I don't know that we ever got to the place where we just beat each other to a pulp. We pestered each other from time to time. But 
so our culture, I, I don't even know that our culture knows how to fight. But spiritually, it's an issue. Spiritually, it's an issue because, as I said, there's a, there are battles coming. You're going to face something today. They're gonna hit, there are people near and dear to me that had no idea that at the beginning of the year they would face the tragedy that they're facing. You can't see it coming. But when it's there, are you able to stand? And that's what this series is about. Ephesians chapter six goes into this. The book of Ephesians, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, and as he's writing them, he kind of gives them this master class of this is the first couple chapters, or this is what it's like to be found in Christ. The second part of it leads us up to now that you're in Christ, this is the action. And there's some, some clarifying things in there, some really popular verses found in Ephesians, where we are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. It's that powerful scripture found in Ephesians. But then you get to the last part of it, and Paul kicks off verse 10 by saying, finally, after I've told you all these things, finally, this is where we're at. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces and evil of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, let us keep, let us take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, we stand. So Christianity is this. Christianity is the protection and the peace of Jesus and trials, and an adversary. How many of you know we have an enemy? Say amen. amen. How many of you know his name is Satan? Say amen. amen. How many of you know he's a punk? Amen. He's a punk, and that punk doesn't fight fair. Uh, th- some of you that have been in a few scuffles go, there's no such thing <laughs> as a fair fight, unless there's a ring and a bell there's, and it, all, all bets are off. We're going to get scrappy. And the devil fights that way. He's not going to come knock on your front door. That's not how he functions. He's going to sneak in the back window. He's going to grab one of your children when they leave and come back in with them. He's going to attack your spouse at their job so that when they get home, they're all over everything. That's how the devil is going to attack. He's not going to walk up and be bowed up and say, let's throw down. That's not what he does. In fact, the Bible even lets us know that he walks to and fro. He just scans the horizon of the earth and goes, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right there. There. They're weak right now. Let's, let's go get them. Please understand this devil that we face, this adversary that we face, his goal is not to annoy you. It's not to cause you to stumble. It's not to trip you a little bit. The devil's only purpose is to destroy you. That's all he wants to do. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want to trip you so you have a bad day. He wants to ruin your day. He wants to kill you in that day. That's what he wants. He wants to kill your witness. He wants to kill your testimony. He wants to make you look like a liar to the world around you. Any way he can do that, he will do that. And so Paul, as he's writing, he writes this other person or this other church in Corinth. And this is what he says in Corinth. He says, for a wide door has been opened for effective service to me. He says that there's this big, big opportunity for ministry to happen and many adversaries. And many, ad- there's a great opportunity and there'll be trouble on the way. We wanna look at this, if we were writing this I feel like sometimes in my own life, I would have said, God gave me a lot of good opportunities, but there were many adversaries, so I didn't finish them. But there were a lot of obstacles, so I didn't step into the fight. I know God was asking me, and I know God was telling me that there was an opportunity here, but, and I think we missed the and in this passage. We missed that God's preparing us for the battles. He knows they're coming. 
And so I want to just walk through this text a little bit today. Just verse 10, 11, 12, and 13 is as far as we're going to get. And we're not going to rush through it. But as we dive into these, you need to understand that God does a good job in the text. and Paul does a good job in writing the text in very specific ways. Very specific wording and rhythm in the text that I think is going to speak to you today. I pray that it does. So here we go. First thing I want you to get as we dive into this text is that God gives us, in the Word of God, there's very specific commands that are given. Everybody say specific commands. commands. How many of you just spit on the chair in front of you when you said specific? (laughs) Sorry, I'm I'm showering the front row up here. Uh, These people recognized it and left the front row. Um, There's very specific commands in this passage in verse 10 where he says, finally, finally be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want you to focus again on the word and. Be strong in the Lord and. Everybody say and. And. In the strength of his might. There are two separate commands here about God. And I think this is really, really clear that I think this is where the church is. I think we believe in God. How many of you believe in God? Say amen. amen. How many of you believe that there is no other name given among men whereby you must be saved in Jesus Christ? How many of you believe that? How many believe you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength? How many of you believe that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord on that day? We believe in his name. But I don't think we believe in his ability. And that's why Paul said, and. He said, you be strong in the Lord. Lord, This is my master. This is who I follow. This is the authority has been given to this name. Be strong in the Lord. We have have trusted the title of God, but I don't know that we trust the ability of God. Because we'll say the Lord can do anything, but the moment we need him to do something, we take back everything. We go, Lord, I, I need your help here. And then we never let it go. Lord, I need you to help my marriage. But I'm going to control everything in the marriage. Lord, I need, I, 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 God, you've got to help us with our money. But no, I don't trust you with any of our money. God, I need you to, I, I need you to fix my kids. But I'm not going to really do anything you say in your word regarding my kids. So we, we trust his name, but only trust his ability. We trust that he is God. We just don't really like letting go of control to allow him to be God in our situations. How, how many of you are control freaks just a little bit? Yeah, some of you are raising your hand. Those of you that are raising your hand, you've come to a place in your life where you've realized, hey, I may be a little bit of a control freak. The rest of you are in what we call denial. <laughs> you... <laughs> You just haven't realized it yet. <laughs> we're, we're, we're amazing at this. Because we'll, we'll feel it. We'll, sit, we'll, we'll know that God is convicting us. We'll know God's pressing on our heart about something. Whether it's in church or you're sitting at home or some of you, from the, re- the reason you're here today is because something woke you up and you went, I, we probably should go to church today. And you did. And man, I appreciate that so much. I'm so thankful that you followed God in coming here today. But others of you, you hear that and God moves in you a little bit and says, hey, 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 this is what I need from you. This is what I'd love for you. This is, if you'll do this, I can open up your purpose. And you go, yeah, it's a great idea, God, but I got some other stuff I need to take care of. I, I, got, I got some things I need to handle. I, I got a few things that if I just get them straightened out, then, then Lord, I, then I'll show up as if you are God giving him time rather than him being God and allowing you time. That's backwards. That's what happens when you trust in the title of God but not in the ability of God in your own life. And Paul said, you, not, you, you gotta be strong in the Lord and in his mighty strength. In his mighty strength. Because here's the thing. Paul recognized that later on he said, when I am weak, he is strong. In other words, when I recognize that I cannot do this is when he shows up the most and shows the world he can. Amen. It's when he shows up the most and says, watch. 
Do you know how foolish Moses must have looked standing in the edge of the water with a stick in his hand? <laughs> Think about that. Nobody thinks that we, we get these m- movie pictures in our mind. Half of Israel was standing there going, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> what is he doing standing out there with a stick in his hand? And the moment he went like this and that water rolled back and God stepped in where Moses' weakness wouldn't allow it. You know what all those people said then? Let's go. Let's go. Some, I don't know what it was, but I'm following now because I just saw something I didn't expect. How, you don't know what you're missing because God is waiting to do something in your life that no one will expect. But you got to not just trust that he's God. You got to trust that he's able in your life. In your life. Yep, Vince, my life's a mess. Welcome to the party. I love each of you, but all of you are a mess. I don't even have to know what your mess is to know that you're a mess. How many of you would just say amen that you're a mess? And yet, and yet we don't want to trust God with his creation, water parting, lame walking, leper healing, blind seeing, dumb talking, deaf hearing, power. We'd rather trust our control. Specific wording. Paul says, if you want the armor to work, if you want the armor to work that I'm about to tell you about, you must be in. You must be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. He has to be the the reason. He has to be the source. Second thing, and it's the same word, same verse. We're, gonna, we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay right there. There's just another thing that God tells us in this. It's not only the specific command of the and. You need both parts. But there's also a really small word in here as we throw this verse back up there that says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. It says this, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I believe that one of the struggles we have in the modern church is that we have missed this word, this two-letter word that is simply in, and we've settled for near. Near, oh, I just don't, I just don't know that I feel close to the Lord. If all you're shooting for is close to the Lord, you're missing it. Uh, you, how many of you remember Sesame Street? How many remember Grover? Grover come in and go, near? <laughs> and then he'd run to the back of the wall and he'd go, far. Right? I can't impersonate Grover, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> and he'd just do it over and over again. Near? Far. Near, and, and we all understood it. When he was close, he was near. When he was way back there, he was far away. And people do that with God now. The problem with near and far is it's relative. It's different for everybody. Abe, would you say that I'm near to you right now? No, you wouldn't say that I'm, I'm like, it's literally 30 feet. But no, I'm not near to you. Would you say Yellville is near? No. Would you say it's far? It is far. How many of you know Harrison is far? No matter how you drive it, it's far. How many of you have ever had a commute to work that was at least an hour both ways? Yeah. And it was nothing, it was going to work, right? But then now, because things have changed, your situations change, your circumstances change, now the idea, the thought of driving an hour to go to work, you're like, oh, 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 no. Oh, so far. I still feel like I'm really close to God. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, I mean, it could mean something for you, but then it also could mean something different for you and can equally means something different for me, but well, actually I don't feel close to God. I kind of feel far away from God. Well, how far away from God do you feel? Like, can you see him or do you, or do you not see him? Or, or maybe how, how far? I don't really know. I just, I don't feel, I don't, you don't feel what? The problem with near and far is it's relative. There's no way to gauge it. And so Paul doesn't use that word. In fact, Jesus doesn't use that word. Paul says, be strong in You know what no one can argue with? If you are sitting in this building, no one will look at you and go, you are sitting outside this building. Right? That'd be silly. There's no way you win that argument if somebody gets in your face and goes, hey, are you in the building? (laughs) 
Yes? I think you're out of the building. I think you're crazy. <laughs> but if somebody says, are you near God? Or are you far from God? Now you have to think. Paul says, this relationship you have with Christ ought not be something that's relative to just the wave of the day or the feeling of the moment. You are in Christ. You are in, and there's not, a, there's not a doubt in your mind that you are in Christ. Now I'm just gonna tell you, there are moments you may feel outside, you may feel like you can't hear him, but most of the time that's a fixable thing with repentance. Jesus said it in John chapter 15, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him will bear much fruit. For apart from me, catch that, apart from me would mean near or far. Some of you right now, you've been, I'm just trying to get closer to the Lord. I've been, I've been, I've been trying to listen to, I mean, I got a bumper sticker. I mean, I, I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying. And man, I'm so thankful that you're trying. I'm so thankful that you're walking that path, that you're trying to get closer. But let me tell you, let me tell you the joy, because here's the other passage that I love, where you see Jesus go, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone would open the door, I will come in. There's a big difference being close to God and being in Christ. I want this year for you to live it in Christ. I want, I want you to walk mountains and I want you to cross valleys and I want you to walk through battlefields in Christ, in the strength that he has, in the fact that he is the Lord of your life. But you gotta be in. You gotta be in. Second thing, I'm gonna move on, try to, I'm gonna try to get through quickly. Not only do we have specific commands from God, but we have specific reasons for those commands. God says, verse 11, so put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armor, everybody say whole armor. Whole. I need a partner, I need, I need somebody to help me out real quick. Does somebody come up? Uh, it doesn't matter, I don't have a preference, just need somebody to hold some stuff for me. All right, Ren, you go right back up there. I'll bring it to you. All right. Okay. So Paul's speaking to a primarily Roman congregation here, a Roman context, okay? The people would have known Roman soldiers. You can go ahead and throw that picture up. We'll finally use it. I haven't used it all day, okay? So that guy is not in Rome. He's in someone's backyard, just so you're clear. <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot of privacy fencing in Rome. I don't know. Um, but, but this is kind of what you're dealing with, all right? So... So helmet, sword. Helmet would have been anywhere from about five to seven pounds. Sword was gonna be anywhere from two to three pounds depending on the weight of the hilt, okay? And so there's, you got a 10 pound weight right there. Sword, helmet, that's what you got. Breastplate, 25 pounds, all right? That's what wrapped around your chest. Shield, another 25 pounds. Now, let me ask you, can you tell there's weight in your hands? Yes, sir. Some of this is gonna rattle, but I need you to lean in real close. And again, I know this may not sound encouraging, but I want, you, I want, the, rest of your, I want the rest of your year to be right. Your salvation was free, for you are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. But although your salvation was free, it came with a weight of responsibility to carry it. Do you remember Jesus saying, take up your cross? Do you think the cross didn't have weight? If you claim to be a Christian and you feel no weight to your Christianity, you may be missing something. responsibility of a risen Savior is mine and is yours. He called 
me and you. He called us to proclaim the gospel. He called us to proclaim this living Christ. He called us. You can feel it like you can, see, you can carry it. You could probably carry it for a season, but you'd know the weight was there when you're in. You start to feel it. How many of you know sometimes after a while, weight starts to get a little heavy and we start to not know what to do with it? It's the reason Paul says put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor. Don't, don't, don't try to just go with the helmet. It won't be enough. Why? Because the breastplate, your heart, the righteousness that you need in Christ won't be enough. Take these through. So as, as you think about this weight that you have, that God has placed in your life, Ren, thank you. Do you sense the weight that's there? Paul says, put on the whole armor of God so that you might resist the schemes of the devil. He's not going to fight you fair. He's not, he's not going to walk through the front door. He's going to come at you in different ways. And so carrying the weight of this armor is a necessity. And then he repeats it. He says, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why you need this armor. Because we don't fight the guy that shows up in front of us. He says, we, we fight somebody different. We, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Some of you are not fighting a battle against a person or a, you're fighting a battle against this thing in your mind that works you over day and night. This anxiety, this worry, this doubt, this fear. Some of you, it's not those things, but it's shame. And his disappointment in yourself. And I haven't made the right choices. And here I am sitting here in my 20s or my 30s. And I have no more of a plan about tomorrow than I did yesterday. And I don't know what to do. That's the enemy that we face. Putting you in a spiral. And letting you spin out. Hoping that you just become of non effect. Therefore, Paul comes back to it and says, Therefore, put on the whole armor of God. He repeats it. Put on, don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Some of you, the reason that you don't feel the weight of it because you said yes to Jesus when you were younger. You said yes to Jesus in a moment where you felt near to God, but you didn't pick up the armor. And he says it twice. Put it on. Take it up. You got, you got to implement the armor or you'll get defeated. You'll get beat down. I don't want that for you. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all of this, having put on the armor, having taken up the armor, having understanding that we fight an enemy that's going to come at us in different ways, stand. Stand. Stand strong. No, you're not alone. No, you've got people around you. No, you, no, you don't have to fight the battle alone. Stand.